Good afternoon. Uh, we are going to start our session on uh, uh, free uh, from uh, violence, free to change the world. This is the title of our session. Wow. And uh, specifically, this session is going to address the issue of uh, female genital mutilation and child marriage. So, and uh, I will start by calling Minister uh, Dimitu Ambisa Bonsa, who is the head of office of the Prime Minister and Cabinet Affairs Minister in Ethiopia. Please, Madam, join us. Thank you. Girls and vulnerable children. Thank you, Madam, for joining us this afternoon. I would like to call the second panelist, Marie Pierre Poirier, uh, who is the UNICEF Regional Director for West and Central Africa. She's based in Dakar and she provides leadership for 24 country offices across the region. Two global programs to eliminate child marriage and another one to eliminate female genital mutilation. Then I would like to call uh, Madame Angelique Kidio. Angelique, uh, welcome. We have seen you this morning during the opening session. Thank you so much for uh, the coming. And I'm Grammy Award winner, and she's one of the greatest artists in international music today. How she's using her voice uh, with that video, and Angelique is using her voice as UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador for Go in New York in the General Assembly Room on Female Genital Mutilation Elimination. Thank you so much, Angelique, for joining. Dr. Morisanda Kuyate, please join us, uh, who is the, uh, currently the Executive Director of the Inter-African Committee on Harmful practice, uh, Traditional Practices Having Effect on Health of the Women and the Children, commonly named IAC. IAC is an NGO who has uh, 29 uh, national committees represented in Africa, but also in Europe and in the US. And uh, Dr. Kuyate uh, is uh, leading uh, this institution for several years now. But I would like to say that I met Dr. Kurai Kuyate about 25 years ago, and he was the head of the Ministry of Health, uh, Reproductive Health. And uh, we had a project at that time, but Dr. Kuyate, as soon as he saw me, he said, you know what, I have a passion. And I said, what is your passion? And he said, I want to eliminate those traditional practices of female genital mutilation and uh, child marriage. And that was his passion since 30 years. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Kuyate. And our last panelist is Natalie Tingo, who is our EDD Young Leader. Please, Natalie, join. So she's the last but not the least. She's going to challenge us today. And Natalie is the founder of, uh, and director of Mishana Empowerment Korea. She's from Kenya. Uh, and uh, this NGO is a grassroots-based uh, organization that is committed to work uh, to end female genital mutilation. Same question to Dr. Morisanda Kuyate, but regarding uh, female genital mutilation. So Dr. Kuyate, uh, the IAC has been instrumental in uh, uh, you know, creating the 6th February as International Day, uh, Zero Tolerance for Female Genital Mutilation, and also instrumental in uh, bringing you know, the African-led uh, resolution at the uh, General Assembly. Uh, what exactly, can you tell us first, you know, what is the scale of this practice also on the global level, but also in the African region where you are acting uh, more? Thank you very much. Uh, allow me to speak in French. I think you have your uh, translation. I'd like to start off by thanking this panel's organizers and say that we are talking at the moment about a, a very important and emotionally charged subject. I'd just like to give you an idea of uh, FGM from a different point of view, because for 30 or 40 years now, uh, 
since the Inter-African Committee was established with all the range of partners, we've been saying the same thing now for 30 or 40 years. Perhaps we have to find a new way of saying it. We've got uh, 29 countries in Africa practicing FGM at the moment. And in some places it's 99%, in other countries it's right down to 1%. But that doesn't mean much in itself, because in countries where the one, it's 1% 1 frequency, it will be restricted to one little region. But when you go to that region, it's 100% of the people there. So it might be 1% for the country, but it's 100% in that little pocket. And that means that the figures you look at don't give you a true picture of reality. And I'd also like to say this isn't an African phenomenon. We've come to realize that you've not only got 29 African countries practicing FGM, but other countries outside Africa, Yemen, Iraq, Iran, Indonesia. They practice FGM. So that changes our whole concept of what FGM is. I'd also like to add another important thing. There are figures that we are not being told, that we're not telling you. When the Inter-African Committee started in 1984, we said that we would have put an end to FGM by 2000. But from 1984 to 2000, 32 million girls underwent FGM around the world. In the year 2000, the United Nations fixed the Millennium Goals by saying that by 2015 they wanted there to be no more FGM. And between 2000 and 2015, 30 million young females were submitted, subjected to FGM. And in 2015, the UN set another goal, 2030, to put an end by FGM by 2030. But I would just like to say that from 2015 to 2030, we are expecting excision or mutilation of 68 million girls because the population is increasing. That is the real FGM situation. In other words, we've got to get out of our familiar framework to see how we're going to deal with this disturbing situation. The harder we fight, the more is happening. So this it is, an FGM is a genuine insult to humanity. It is an insult to girls. It is a, an aggression against women. And whatever excuses might be made for it, nothing can justify FGM. Absolutely nothing. Religion, social pressure, politics, none of that can justify it. FGM is justified by nothing whatsoever. It is a very serious and important issue. And there's, as long as there's one single girl at risk of, un, of, of FGM. The leaders of Africa are not doing anything because in their family you find that. They practice FGM and they practice child marriage. Village. There are many issues we face. It. So I face them, and you say you love your girl, why do you accept that and why can't we stop this? Uh, so, uh, Morisanda, I would like to ask you uh, what uh, finally you're seeing as, uh, uh, you know, uh, how can we bring the change and uh, which, are the, what, which challenges, you know, are we still seeing? Well, thank you very much. I think we've got enough distance now to see what exactly we want to do. We want to abolish FGM. Now, as I see it, we need to approach the countries where FGM exists, and even the countries where it doesn't. We need to make, ask them to make it into a true development priority. As I've said many times, Roads are good, building is good, 
but what are all these things for? They're there for that little girl. That's what they're for. But if she is deprived of her organs, if she is pinned to her bed because she bears the consequences of FGM, then she doesn't need any highways. She won't use them. She doesn't need electric light because even when the electric light is on, she can't enjoy it. So it's got to be a national priority. And when I say priority, I mean it's got to be a priority at national level, especially, I think, in Africa. And the governments have really got to grip, get to grips with it. We really want to make FGM a thing of the past. It's not about asking for money and say, hey, let's have a grand project. No. The national budgets must have money, national money set aside to crack down on FGM and child marriage. It's got to be there, black on white. The other challenge that we face is that we could carry on going into villages as NGOs, going to see people for a hundred years, if we did do it collectively at village level, at national level, regional level, at international level, if we don't go at it all guns blazing, it will be a complete waste of time. So the point isn't to have a nice conference here in Brussels and enjoy ourselves. There's all kinds of people in here. But we need to get together in the villages. And the, the villages have got to be there. The nation has got to be there. The government has got to be there. And the NGOs have got to be there. All together. That's it. If we could have an international meeting in Brussels and a grassroots meeting in a little village as well, and I think we'd be able to make progress. But that's the way I see things going. If we really want to do useful work protecting little girls. The second thing is, we've got to remember that, uh, that, that we must get the idea out of our heads that, FG, that, that, that cracking down on FGM is helping girls and women. No, it's not just about girls and women. It's about protecting and respecting their rights. It's not some nice government program giving women a present. No, it's, it's their rights. They're entitled to their bodies. No one has any right to remove any part of their bodies. It's as simple as that. And I'd say this approach must be taken together. We can get it done if we all join hands. Thank you. Uh. Thank you very much. It's a good question. And I remember back in 2001, I had the honor of being here with our committee and with the First Lady of Burkina Faso in order to present the report on the subject to the European Parliament. And what the report did was set out the first ever overview of FGM in Europe, and which proposed ways of taking action to eradicate it. Now, after the vote back in 2001, the European Parliament immediately allocated money so that NGOs in Europe and Africa would work hand in glove. Now, it didn't go well because you needed Africans to come here and tell people what was happening on the FGM front. And we were very much invited to raise awareness in Parliament. But as soon as the money had been earmarked, the European NGO said, aha, that's for us. The Africans shouldn't have anything to do with it. Go back to Africa. 
so it's big, so FGM has become a, a money problem. Is that it? Well, let's try to avoid that in future. It's not a money issue. It's a problem of stopping FGM. It's not a, a challenger wanting to go on TV. It's not wanting to have a vote. Elections, that's not what it's all about, not at all. We've got to work hand in glove together. As I said, together with Europe, there is no continent is as hostile to FGM as much as Europe is, apart from Africa. But we need a paradigm change. We need to really work together, I'm properly working together. If there's an EU member of the European Parliament getting together with a president from Africa, with an NGO working in Africa, if they get together, together with the UN, and if they go door to door in any country in the world and talk about FGM, they can make progress. They will make progress. So it is vital to make sure that if we want to work together, we need to know exactly what our objective is. And that's why when the Inter-African Committee was set up, right back in 1984, we set up Inter-African groups and also Inter-African committees outside Africa, in New Zealand, in Japan, in, in, in Europe, in order to follow the African diaspora all around the world. And the last thing I'd like to say is that we also don't want to say, right, well, uh, it, 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 it's barbaric, it's savages, we need to help them to shake off their barbaric habits. No, this is a breach of human rights. Just as there are breaches of human rights in Europe, America, and Asia. So let's work together. Let's come up with, with programs together. And I'm delighted to say we have got the joint program in front of us. And this joint program needs to be extended. I'd like something more overarching so that money and human resources can be pooled together so we can divide, we can, we can spread the tasks and really make progress. That's what I wanted to say. And I really want to say just now that money isn't the heart of the matter. No, the thing is giving women, their girls, their rights. Thank you. Maurice <laughs> uh, Sanda, mm -hmm. last well, my, recommendation. My last recommendation is um, 2030 is too far. Hmm. We have to end FGM before that. Hmm. We sure. can't continue to Faster. fix all time 15 years, 15 years, and continue to cut million and billion of hmm. girls. So my recommendation is, okay, 2030 is a UN objective, but we should end FGM before that. Thank you. Thank you, Maurice yeah. Sanda.